virtually the same as he was doing. Dang. Turn me down. Somebody turn them on. Yeah. Good morning. It's 10.08. We'll call this meeting. We're talking County Commissioner's Court Order. If everyone please rise. This time I'd like to call on the Honorable Bob Hampton to give the invocation. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you with thankful hearts. We're thankful for the privilege that we have of living in this great country. And we ask you now to give us the uh, leadership that we need to maintain this country in a way that our children and our grandchildren uh, will grow up and uh, experience the same kind of blessings that we have. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the rain that we've had this past week, and you know this moisture this morning was uh, helpful to the fact that we need, uh, we need moisture so badly. And so we come to you uh, with expectations of uh, the rain that we need, and we just thank you for it. We thank you for the leaders in this court, and we ask you now to guide and direct us in your presence here. And uh, we ask you, Lord, to help us remember the great history of our country. And uh, we think back of those heroes of uh, September the 17th of, of 1862 and those men that stood in a, in a field uh, far, far from their homes in Texas and, and held the line. God and direct us in all this we ask in your most precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Bob. Shall we join the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, one individual. No, oh, did that. Uh, excuse me. Man. Got him crossed that? We're moving to the Texas. Yeah, I got it. I tried to combine them. Yeah. All right, let's try the Texas one. Yeah. Honor the, the Texas, Texas flag. flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one individual. All right, that worked better. Thank you. Got that right. Yep. <laughs> Uh, they kind of work together, yeah. Yeah. so it's the spirit of the deal. If I could ask the, yeah. well, I was still going over your history comment. Thinking, you, know, <laughs> you got him all stirred up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's take uh, action on the consent agenda, please. Judge, having looked at the consent agenda on Friday and again this morning, everything looks to be in order, and I'd make a motion that we that we pass the same. Thank you. I'll second that, Judge. Thanks, sir. Motion by Commissioner Mahler, a second by Commissioner Gonzalez, uh, to approve the consent agenda as presented. Any comments or questions? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Uh, motion carries 4-0. Item <clears throat> number one, under general business, review and approve the emergency and regular bills for payment. Judge, I've reviewed the emergency and regular bills and move we approve. Second that, Judge. Thank you all. <clears throat> Motion by Commissioner Norris, second by Commissioner Gonzalez to approve the emergency and regular bills as presented. Any comments? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries 4-0. Item number two is discuss, consider, or take action to purchase the following parity consulting equipment to replace failing equipment in the courthouse third floor. An HP 2920-48G switch is configured for $2,097.97 each for a subtotal cost of $4,195.94. Two HP 2920 port stacking modules at $735.70. Six each for a uh, total of 1,471.52, and two HP 2920 1M uh, stacking cables for network devices, 147.56 each, subtotal 295.12. Total cost is 6,029, including freight, to be paid by transfer from 10412 capital expenditures to the appropriate lines determined by the county auditor. Mr. Crutchfield. It's one of our, it's a, it's a newer old switch. I guess it's one that we repurposed when we did our first uh, 
refreshed some years ago, and it's just it's just time to go ahead and get it out of the mix as well. So that's what we want to do is go ahead and replace that before it completely dies. Okay. Thank so you. what's a good time line on this kind of equipment? I mean, is this Here, a five-year thing? Pass him that microphone, please. <clears throat> And there may not be an answer to that. I was just curious. Is this, I mean, is this something you need to do over five years or ten years? Or we're we're running about every ten years, seven to ten years on these. We've got some older switches uh, that were originally installed uh, in 2001 when we first put the network up. They're still functional so far as uh, whether they'll pass traffic, but they are extremely slow compared with the capabilities of today's. Uh, network cards on modern computers and servers and things like that. So that's one one reason that uh, some of these older ones have gotten replaced. But we we run them until they're expired, pretty much. So I hear you say it's a it's a wear and tear deal and a technology upgrade. Yes, sir. Just a combination of the two. Yes, sir. This one, this switch, particular switch we're discussing now, it's a uh, it's wear and tear on it. Okay. George, I assume you have the money for this in your mm -hmm. budget? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Part of what we do, we do budget a, a significant amount of money in yes. IT for this exact kind of thing because you can't predict when some of this is going to uh, start failing. So uh, we try to get the maximum time out of it. Well, with that explanation, I would make the motion that uh, we purchase uh, from Parity Consulting the fighting equipment on the courthouse third floor, the two HP. 2920-48Gs, the two HP 2920 two-port stacking modules, the two HP 2920 uh, stacking cable, a total cost of 6029 be paid for from 100.412.5001 capital expenditures. I'll second that motion. Thank you. <coughs> motion by Commissioner Mahler, second by Commissioner Rollers to approve the item as stated. Any other comments or questions? All in favor, signal up saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries 4 0. Item number two is discussed and consider to take action on approving the purchase of election equipment from Heart Inner City at a cost of $1,022,487.50 to authorize the county judge to sign a lease purchase agreement with payment from Fund 264 election equipment and replacement. Ms. Bohannon? Anything you did a while ago give me a revised number on the touch screen machines? Is that? Yes. Yes. Yes, I did. What, 210, and I think it's what instead of 220? Yes, sir. And that's on the non handicapped machines, you'd keep those at 50? Yes, sir. Okay. I've got two lists in front of me here. One of them is a Schedule A. Is that the current? Is is that where we are, Judge? Um, I've got a quote here with. Uh, What's your total down at the bottom? Well, million twenty-two. Okay, that would be the two hundred and twenty machines. Ken. Okay, but the one million dollar price tag on Schedule A re that reflects the two hundred. What was your number? Two eleven. No, two, two, two ten. Two ten. Okay, two ten. Uh, Are we going to look at this as a approve either approval or disapproval of the machines, and then the lease purchase option? Or are we going to do it as a package? Let's do it as a package. How is separate? Well, they're not posted as separate, so okay. uh, I think we'd, I'd take the action together. Um, there's okay, I'm looking at several options here on the. Okay, there, there's four proposals there uh, from American National. The A and B proposal. Now, all of this is dealing with the larger figure, figure of the million twenty-two thousand. Now, keep in mind, and I'm going to get you all tied up from last week too. <laughs> Yes. Okay. okay. When we're talking about cash flow, we've already agreed to pay cash for the poll books of the 118000 Okay. Now what you have to decide in option A, 
is are you going to finance all of that and pay your payments up front at the beginning of this year, which then means you would have um, that payment plus the 118000 So that hundred and I think $80,000 payment, add another $118,000, you are just shy of 300000 coming out of that election fund, which has approximately $687,000 in it. The option B would be to pay those payments in arrears after paying another $100,000 down. Okay. Uh, no, I'm sorry. It's just to pay $100,000 down and pay the payments up front. Option C would be to take everything to the pay in arrears, and option D would pay the $100,000 down and then take the payments in arrears. So you, you've got four plans, slightly different. It makes a difference in how long you borrow money at the 2.25% rate. And it makes a difference in how much cash you want to put out because ultimately one of the things we're looking at cash-wise, uh, while this money is at uh, a very good rate, uh, we're only looking at you know, a, a five-year obligation on it. In our future is a lot of money, <laughs> uh, and I divide a lot between eight and say fourteen billion out on the annex J. A million, not a million. Billion, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just used I to that. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it is if you put a zero and a decimal point in front of it, but. Uh, at any rate, 14 billion, none of us are going to be here anyway. <laughs> <laughs> be an awfully good jail. <laughs> be really nice. Yeah. Uh, at, at any rate, that money is going to be, as predicted, probably in the neighborhood of 4% for 20 or 30 years. So, my suggestion to the court, and whatever we consider, is look at keeping the optimum amount of cash we pay down because. One, the interest rate is higher and it's much longer. Let's use our money for that. Because the next year's budget, when we're going to do this, uh, does not project, because we didn't, we stuck with the effective rate, it does not project any increased amount of money at the end of the year. In fact, we could probably come down a million dollars in our fund, fund balance, depending on how expenditures go. And whether you raise taxes or not, every year that's a throw of the dice because we don't know how many people we're going to have in jail, we don't know how much indigent health care is really going to be, and we don't know how much uh, indigent defense those major costs are, are going to be. Employee health care. And employee health care. Luckily this year we, we came in way lower than we had anticipated. So, But that's not going to be an every year thing. And, and you're still looking forward to 2018, where, what we're going to be able to do on health care once they finish writing rules on, on how that's going to affect us. So Are what I'm funds yes. in that voting equipment account, is that a dedicated? It's dedicated by local decision, okay. not by law. But it is still considered in the, in the reserve number, so. Yes, in the overall reserve figures, I think Mr. Hampton, when he reports, like he did last week, his monthly figure, they are in that. We were not including them when we were looking at jail money. But about everything else was. Transfer to the general account. Yeah. Okay. I did appreciate the um, uh, memo you sent and with from our consultants as well, Murphy Davis. Thank you for uh, sending that and helping us about part of this uh, financing. Thank you for that, Bob. What I, the court might do, um, we have the revised figure that we're going to look at. If you approve the item and approve, <coughs> and Meredith, hang in with me, see if you're going to have any problem with this. But I'm saying, Commissioner Mahler and I have been the point of contact on this so far. Um, we can go through the documents, sit down, and maybe 
we had Murphy's recommendation, but in this morning's conversation, he was kind of looking at, and I didn't talk with him, Mr. Wall did, about maybe looking at option D. Um, I'm not real hung up whether we pay in advance or we pay at the end of the year. One of the things that has got into my mind might be, and this is, uh, if we're doing it in the arrears, it costs us a little more money, but it extends the period of time that the new equipment would be coming out, and if the court wanted to look at exercising that option, it kicks that can down the road a little bit, I believe. Does that sound right, Felicia, Ken, to, to you all and what we've said in that agreement? Uh, Mike, that may be catching you a little cold because we're talking about your money. <laughs> we're just going to give it back to you eventually. Uh, but that would be, do you have any trouble, Meredith, that you can think of? And that's kind of unfair to ask you right here, but I, I, that the, the court would have that range of decision to make uh, delegated to the commissioner and me on which option to take after we finalize the figures. Because one, we're going to a lesser figure now, so we don't have the exact figures. Mm -hmm. um, Okay. I, the auditor may have an issue with not knowing what the amount was that was approved. Well, we could state the item up to a maximum of a million and twenty-two thousand plus finance costs, uh, and that would then. Okay, I would think that would get us over that hurdle. Now that didn't necessarily resolve all the issues in the contract, though. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. Did we send you? Ken made a. There was Friday. a reply. We got the Okay, we're still on the same boat, I think, probably. Uh, okay. All right. Any more, anyone in the audience want to offer any, any additional comment, discussion? Judge, let, let me. Yeah. If, if the option D requires a $100,000 down payment. Correct. And as I look through the proposal here, it, it raises the uh, annual payments, or uh, the lease payments, a little bit above the option A and option B. It's less than option C because it does not have the down payment. But if I'm looking at this right, our total interest would be $63,243 for the life of the contract. So that $100,000 down, in my estimation, would bring you $7,000 in savings over that time which, I mean, if you looked at it on a one-year basis, that's 7% interest. Is that, is that fair? Well, and that, <clears throat> that, that's fair. Uh, Am I looking at it wrong is, I guess, what I'm asking you about, which to me, uh, I don't know where you can go get 7% today. No, it won't, because it's going to be over a number of years. Good point. Yeah. It's going to be over a number of years. I had it figured as a one-year deal. You're right, Willie. That's, that's why I was asking the question. I thought I had a fallacy in my... Yeah, I, I, you know, my advice to the court is to, since we're paying out that other 118000 then I would look at the non-down payment uh, plan and take it, decide which one that you're going to pay up front or in the arrears. And you've got a, a few thousand dollars difference in the interest rate over the period of that contract. Uh, I think it's well. It ranges from seventy thousand total down to a low of fifty-five. So you're looking at a, what? A, well, it's about fifty-six thousand. Yeah. Really so you're looking at if you look at between total. option A and B, you're looking at six thousand difference over the lifetime of the contract. <clears throat> and a good county treasurer is going to make that up. But. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's the only place I know you'd get that right, but no. I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, Judge, really and truly, all of the lease options on this list are over. If you span that over out over a five-year period, they're close enough that you're not going to make a major difference, whichever. Not in the you, fun, no. You really, I mean, they're very close. There's a little bit of time, money value there, but 
But I'd rather have that hundred thousand going against that twenty to thirty year note on that jail. Three seven five to four percent, which yeah. is what we're talking about. I think that's a good. I think I that's think a good so choice. Too. So, are you talking about option A or option C? Yes. Those are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're both on the on the on the table. Also, you, you know, Judge, if I was having this discussion with my wife, she would tell me what to do. Wouldn't you? <laughs> well, if you would listen to me the rest of the time, I'd start here today and we'd work forward. But it doesn't always work that way. Uh, Judge, uh, yes, sir. I keep hearing the conversation going on here, and we're talking like it's already a done deal that we buy the equipment because we're already talking about financing it. My question is, uh, when all this discussion came up, it was about the poll books. Everything centered around the poll books that if we could get that taken care of, our problems would be solved. All of a sudden, now our voting equipment, or what do you call the? The I elections uh, machines, yeah. Yeah, the machines uh, aren't any good. Uh, what? I'd like to hear from the county clerk as why they're no good now, especially when when we heard that the poll books were going to solve they uh, solve one of biggest problem. concerns. Now, what's the problem with machines? Let me help out here just a little bit. Okay, the poll books was half the problem, and we were concerned about the fact that it was still using a Windows XP operating system that's no longer supported by Microsoft and you cannot update, and it was on the internet. We looked at poll books, I mean, at the elections equipment separate, and Ms. Bohan to jump in here anytime. but once again, it's the same operating system that uh, was not changed. It's not on the internet. It's not subject to compromise, but, and ESNS offered to upgrade two uh, desktop computers uh, buying new Dells, putting in the XP system, and that certainly offers a reasonable support. There was concern, that's on the hardware. There's a lot of concern from past working with, by our IT department and by the county clerk, uh, that we may or may not have the software support and their recommendation was to go on and do so both clerk and IT recommended that and that's where we reacted from last time and that's why we put this off was to bring back in this week and do that anything you all want to add to that or equipment because it jumps off the calibration there's issues like that but I've never said it has not well, how often do they do they jump out of calibration where the other ones are, are going to be subject to the same abuse what's the, the difference the other system is not a touch screen but uh, every election we do go out after I've calibrated them and I have to recalibrate several of the machines yes. how many do you have to do Commissioner, I couldn't tell you, a couple at a polling location during early voting, luckily those clerks will calibrate them, they calibrate them every morning. The other thing is both the former Democratic County Chairman and the current Republican County Chairman spoke to last week was the concern that people have that once one of those goes out of calibration and people don't or they do report it, the feeling that that equipment is reliable and accurate is a great concern to them. Gentlemen, y'all are both here. I'm not, I'm not trying to, but I was just trying well, to summarize how, that. How many times have we had an issue with it as I, far as uh, uh, putting a, an election in jeopardy? I can't think of an election we've had that there hasn't been that comment, either the election day from somebody or, you know, by calling in and saying they were concerned and I asked them if they reported it to the voting judge there. Some did, some didn't. Uh, you know, but there is concern about the calibration of, of the equipment. Now, as far as the processing commissioner, and I think this is part of what you're asking, I don't think we've ever had a processing counting issue no. at, at all.
And it, the only reason I was encompassing that because the way we have it stated on the deal, if we're going to do it, we'll do all of it as one because of the way the item is presented. <clears throat> if you all want to take action on this and if you want to narrow it down to the commissioner and I working with uh, American National Bank to uh, select option A or B, or if you all want to go ahead and pick one, we can do that. But you could let us run those numbers with the new, with the million dollar deal and let us look at that. You know, we don't take spending a million dollars lightly. We sure don't take spending several billion lightly. But <laughs> <laughs> well, now that we got it down to million yeah, instead of billion, yeah, so <laughs> so we, uh, in our meeting last week, the thing that I guess brought me to reality on this deal. And I really hated that this got pushed into a last minute deal, that this wasn't something we had a chance to sort out during budget discussions and make longer playing, but sometimes things like that happen. But, and, I, and I'm not, once again, I'm, I'm like you, Joe, I'm not going to put words in anybody's mouth, but I, I heard my, my county clerk and my IT, both my, my two top IT people. Republican chair, former Democratic chair, stand in this courtroom on the record and say that they didn't have confidence in the voting system. I mean, am I misquoting that? Am I? I'm not. Once again, I'm not trying to put words in somebody's mouth. That's what I heard. Maybe I didn't hear it properly, and that brought this thing into a real focus because uh, these elections are serious, serious matters and uh, highly scrutinized by the public. And they need to be serious matters because they're vitally important to the way our entire government system uh, focuses. And it's not just local offices. It's national offices. It's statewide offices and all that. This, this is a serious business, not something to be taken lightly. And neither is a million dollars, and we don't take that lightly. So, But every vote should count. Absolutely. It's about to. That's what makes the system work. Mr. Mills, yes, sir, please. Uh, Simon Ellis, I'm the uh, Republican Party chairman. Stand back here. <laughs> uh, the, uh, and I don't want to speak for Alan, but I'm going to echo what he said. Uh, I'm history making that's two weeks in a row that a Democrat and Republican have agreed on something I'm beginning to wait for <laughs> let's vote for them to go to Washington <laughs> yeah. Mark the on this <laughs> okay what's the desire of the court well judge <laughs> having uh heard that testimony once again, and uh, that's something that's been on my mind all week since, and, and I heard you, uh, Dr. Mills, say the same thing you did a week ago, basically. Uh, once again, we don't take a million dollars lightly, but uh, this is a very, very important uh, part of what goes on in government. I'm going to make the motion that the court uh, adopt Schedule A uh, up to 210 machines uh, for the purchase price of a million dollars and would ask that the financing be left as an option to be negotiated from either option A or option B as presented to the court. So, let me be sure of that. Let's make sure I'm on the right one. Well, because I, I said that to you, and I think I'm, okay, I think that's, it's, that's, no, it's going to A or C. It's A or C. Yeah. Right, let me strike yeah. that and say, leave, leave that open to negotiation for option A or option C. I'll second his motion. OK. 
Okay. We have a motion by Commissioner Mahler, a second by Commissioner Norris to adopt Schedule A up to uh, for up to 210 uh, devices, which that determines the cost of being uh, approximately $1 million. And uh, then to select the finance plan from American National, either using option A or C, which primary is pay up front or pay in the arrears. Take a look at that. Bob, you're wrinkling up on me. Uh, Judge, yeah. Court, uh, you know, if you have the option of either A or C, uh, my suggestion would be to, uh, since I've visited with Murphy about this, and, and Willie even visited with Murphy, I, I, I would really recommend that you just leave all the options open, and you're still going to make a decision on one or the other, but it, I think Murph and, uh, and Mr. Wall kind of leaning towards option D. And, uh, that sounds like a good idea. Treasurer makes a good point, Judge. Yes, he does. Back, yeah, I'd like and to hear more detail on that, but that also flies in contrary to Mr. these. Mr. didn't buy dinner for option E, so I'm going to buy for E. Okay. <laughs> but do you well, amend your motion? A to D, I don't really see why we would exclude B and, B and D. Okay. Well, I'm going to vote yes. Okay. Well, I'll vote yes. I'll vote I think it's a good suggestion. I would amend my motion to uh, look at all the options. And I'll as amend presented. my second to replay. Okay. All yeah, right. There's no reason to limit limit that at this point. Okay. All right. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Aye. Motion passes 3 1. Okay. We're down to uh, public comments. Anyone in the audience have anything to bring up? Okay. Uh, commissioners? Oh, there's Mr. Mills. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'd like a clarification. You voted on financing, but I didn't hear it. Yes, it's it, it, Schedule A equipment. equipment, the equipment listed under Schedule A. Thank yes, sir. Thank you. Well, I would uh, like to uh, thank everyone and, and was very uh, grateful to be a part of the first annual charity dove hunt and it was quite successful as, uh, in raising money for our, our Senior Citizen Center and also provided a lot of good entertainment and brought people into town. Couldn't have asked for better weather and, and I know those that worked on it uh, are very, very pleased. Mm -hmm. A lot of hard work, but good payoff. Well, and the Executive Director of uh, the Parks and Wildlife that was here uh, made a great talk. You felt like you're having a fireside chat with him, and well, you'd figure that because he's married to Troy Gilbert's daughter from Pumpkin Center. So I, I'm still shocked that after he met Troy, that I mean, she's got to be really special. <laughs> and I've known Troy forever, and I hope everybody realizes I say that tongue in cheek. But uh, anyway, just a great, great event. Okay. And it's going to grow. I think it's going to grow. Sure do. Okay. Um, the other thing, I, Bob Harper called me this morning and said there's going to be a meeting tonight right. at the Iowa Park Booster Club, Seven and he is promoting an idea for those that are interested in setting up a scholarship fund uh, through the Iowa Park uh, Booster Club uh, in honor of Robert Wilcox. That's Mr. Wilcox has been calling those. Uh, He's only been sports. a PA announcer in Iowa Park for I think 67 years. Well, he might be getting the knack of he it. He said he's beginning to yeah. get to get the hang of it. So. Yeah. So uh, that's, that's a really good thing. I uh, hope that comes along. We're also having a Wake Up Wichita Falls in Burke Burnett in the morning at the Burke Burnett Whataburger. So come on up and join us for that. Actually, it's Wake Up Wichita County. I like they did that instead of Wichita Falls. So. We're glad they're coming yeah. up to visit with in us. Burke. Um, I'm going to make, hopefully, my last trip on to Austin for the Proposition 1 Tech Stock Committee. Uh, I read the stuff the staff put together in, uh, as from our two previous meetings. This has to do with the $1.5 to $2 billion that if the voters of Texas pass Proposition 1, that will be pulled out of the severance tax to be put into highway. Uh, the purposes are for connectivity, congestion relief, maintenance in general, and work in the high energy impact areas uh, where there's a tremendous amount of energy development going on. Uh, 
And if you go out to some of those areas, if you're out in the Midland Odessa area, you're thinking, how can I run into a traffic jam out on a foreign market road? But in some of that well processing, they'll have convoys of 10 to 18 vehicles, the judge out there reported, that are large. They cover more than half the roadway on a traditional foreign market road. Uh, it's, a, it's a great problem in one way. And uh, when the county judge from there was speaking on that, and saying more money ought to go to his area. And I said, well, yeah, but we want congestion relief. Uh, and I had a Fort Worth city councilman sitting next to me. I said, if it wasn't for all of his cars needing gasoline, you wouldn't need to be producing all that oil. But it takes one or the other. It's got to be done hand in hand. Uh, my only concern with the committee, is, <clears throat> and I think with the, with the highway commission, it's going to be with the legislature, too, is they're wanting to give everybody a little piece of the pie, which we wouldn't mind up here. But I think what they've really got to focus on, we do all these rankings of highway projects. And to me, with the opening of the Panama Canal, taking the super freighters and super tankers through there, it's going to increase the truck transportation through Texas. Uh, because they're going to go through there and come to our ports and offload. And to me, 277 and 281 are major considerations for divided four lanes at, at, a, at a minimum. And uh, guess where both of those come to? Which Wichita Falls. So uh, it would be advantageous to us and certainly advantageous to the people driving because uh, one of the interesting things, and it if you leave San Antonio and you take 35 and you drive to Oklahoma City, it's 16 miles closer than if you come 281. But generally speaking, you're going to come 281 and get there two to four hours sooner because of all the congestion and, and problems on 35. So uh, it, it's I, I keep trying to explain that to them. So, and if you're in trucking business, that time is very important. So, all right, anything else? Uh, do Brady yes, Graff sir. will have a uh, training session tomorrow morning at Region 9 for ag producers for the new farm bill. It is extremely complicated, and there are some very, very important decisions to make. So if you've got any ag interest, you may want to do it, but please call and make a reservation because they've got to have a computer for everybody. So uh, that tells you how detailed this is going to get. Stan Beavers will be here to help with that. And I think Dr. Outlaw is going to be here too, the, the extension specialist. So this thing's complicated and it's uh, very important. But appreciate David Graff putting that together. Appreciate Region 9 for providing the, uh, the facilities for it. So. Oh, okay. You want to go ahead and talk? You can. Okay, county fair. Oh, I see a TO fair. Yeah. Uh, you know, we had the TO fair for years in Iowa Park, and then when we lost the facilities over there. We went to the Wichita County Fair and then with the development of the multipurpose event center we're back to having a Texas Oklahoma Fair and it promises to be a lot of good and the money it raised there goes for great charitable causes throughout the county. Uh, Lions Club puts in a lot of work uh, along with it's a partnership with Impact so it does make some money uh, to help support the operation there and maintain the facility. All right, it is uh, 1047 and we're adjourned. <laughs>